demands. Kids today are more stressed out than ever before, but there is a way parents can help them cope. And here to tell us, please welcome the author of The Power of Your Child's Imagination, Dr. Charlotte Resnick. Nice Thank to have you. you here. Great to be here. All the kids in the audience. I have, love it. I well, love They were the stressed kids. out because they've got their hands full of ice cream cake and they have to plot it. <laughs> oh, oh, the choices. Um, let's let's talk about first. When we talk about small children, and you focus a lot on that in the book, um, why do they need to learn to cope with stress? Uh, what, where, where does it come from? Do they even know it's stress? You know, it's very surprising that kids are more stressed than ever before. Recently, the, even younger kids. Even younger kids. There was a survey survey by the American Psychological Association that kids are saying. The more stress this year than last year, and parents don't even know it. What's causing that stress? Uh, trying to make fr friendships a, is a big one. Doing well in school, all the information age, all the computer age, all the pressure. Boy, from as a parent, I mean, you've got me concerned because that's got to be a stress that we're imposing on our children. They're not picking this up all on their own, saying, "Oh, I've got to achieve." Someone's putting that pressure. It, on them. Look, we know kindergarten's a new first grade. Preschool's like kindergarten. They're in, in preschool. They're already teaching them concepts, which are it's wonderful on one end, but there is pressure. Getting along, sharing is a big one for the younger ones and for older ones. There's all this pressure about fitting in and. Some kids want to be the same. Some kids want to be different. It, who, who they are, it's just more than ever before. You, you say that imagination is a great tool for mm -hmm. kids, and yeah. you have to tap into that power. What kind of imagination are you talking about? Well, look, we all have imagination. Right. And the idea is that we have those answers inside us. We could think of, I have kids even imagine a special animal friend that will help them solve their problems. We were, we were talking earlier about sleep. I had one girl who was having a hard time afraid of sleep. She imagined this big white dragon Valcor wrapped around her bed to help her feel safe at night because she wasn't feeling safe. Even though Perfectly safe area, so perfectly you, safe. So you don't talk about about their imagination is an insight into their stress, but rather if they have particular types of stress, there's yes. different imagination games they can play. Yes. These yes. are the nine tools that you talk about yes. in the book, right? Exactly. Uh, exactly. Let's talk about some of those. The, the first one is balloon breath. What is, <laughs> what, what is that? It's an easy visual, and all the kids here can do it. Right. In between eating all yeah. their wonderful don't, ice cream. Don't don't have a mouthful of ice cream when you try this. But <laughs> the idea is that imagine there's a balloon in your belly, like about two to three inches is below your belly button and you put your hands there to practice mm -hmm. and you breathe into the count of three slowly so the balloon gets bigger and then breathe out slowly. And what you're teaching them is the same thing that we as adults have been taught yes. uh, in, that breathing relieves stress and anxiety. Yes. And that's the center of your body about two inches below your belly button. So you're centering yourself, you're feeling calmer, it lowers blood pressure and you're, you're coming to the place where you can respond rather than react. So that's not so much imagination as it is technique, that's, right? That's the first step to yeah. go into your imagination because once you calm yourself, especially with your eyes closed, then you could imagine a special place where you feel safe and then you could take a, that's like a respite from everyday stress. First of all, just going to a special place. Mm -hmm. But also in a special place, that's where you call in your helpers. And instead of just checking in with yourself, you ask an animal friend, you ask a wizard, you, you check in with your heart lady. Let's talk about the wizard for a second. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it's a different Difficult conversation prepared to tell the child to get in touch with their inner wizard. <laughs> uh, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, with Harry Potter, mm -hmm. wizards are so popular. True. So you, they could just imagine if you had your own personal wizard. Like one boy was having trouble with spelling. He was getting like, oh my God, 27 words wrong in a paragraph, you know, in those paragraph mm -hmm. dictations. So he had a spelling wizard come in. And his spelling wizard washed out his brain, got his brain ready to learn, and kind of whispered the answer in his ear and practiced the flashcards, gave him confidence. And so he went from 27 errors in a paragraph to three or four in a few months. You, you also tell kids uh, that, that imagining color can d help them cope with pain and discomfort. Yes. What, yes. What, how does that work? Well, it's very interesting because if you have a headache or stomach ache, and if you have one, we could take it away, you know, if we have a few minutes. But you, <laughs> you might even ask, one girl has terrible stomach ache, and we asked, okay, what color, go inside, ask your belly, ask your tummy, what color it needs to feel better? And she imagined this swirling rainbow. And just breathing in that swirling rainbow calmed her belly down and allowed her pain to go away because the pain was from the stress. 
Uh, let's talk about some, some typical anxieties that, mm -hmm. that children have to deal with all the time. Uh, we talked about not being able to sleep, but we're, you know, bedwetting. A lot of, oh, a lot of kids, that's, that's know, a lot of anxiety. I know, I know. It is. So I have, <laughs> we, I have one, I'm thinking of one little boy who was like nine or ten, which is really old for it. And what he did was he imagined what his um, bladder and urethra looked like, and you might have to draw it for them. And then what he did was he checked in to see were there any holes in the bladder, was it weak, and he used color to to strengthen it. Then he put an alarm clock and he put Duracell batteries because one time when he didn't, the batteries didn't wake him up. The idea is when the bladder gets half full, the alarm clock wakes you up and you go to the bathroom, come this back to bed. This was an imaginary clock. Yes, yes, it's an imaginary clock. A regular one would be very cumbersome. Yeah, and so yeah I was trying to figure out how that works. Uh, it, it, it's fascinating because children have powerful imaginations and, and mm -hmm. use that to help them. Well, folks, so you've got a book signing tomorrow night at uh, New Renaissance Books, 7 o'clock on Northwest 23rd. That's tomorrow night, and we've got more information on our website at kat.com. Thank you so Thank much.